Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It's time for Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. Thank you for joining me today on Faith to Live By. This is Sue Taylor. You know, not too long ago, someone remarked about their mother who had passed away saying that she was not a contented person. I have thought on her remark about her own mother several times since. She did not make the remark in an ugly, demeaning way, but in a very truthful statement. I knew her mother quite well, in fact, and I can also say with her that her mother was not a woman of contentment, although she was a Christian. I want to ask you, beloved, today, are you a woman or man of contentment? A very simple definition of the word contentment is defined as an uncomplaining acceptance of one's life. I remember reading of a Christian missionary who, along with her husband and children, worked with the uh, pygmies in Africa for 52 years. It was said that primitive did not begin to describe her living conditions in the scorching heat and the humidity of the African bush. This woman had no modern conveniences, such as air conditioning, and she had no electricity. Some days, she said it was so hot that she had to bring the thermometer inside because it couldn't register past 120 degrees without breaking. Yet this woman of faith was a woman of contentment. Those close to her wondered at her grace and contentment. After her death, however, one of her daughters found an old diary of her mother's and she discovered her prescription of contentment. It read, never allow yourself to complain about anything, not even the weather. Never picture yourself in any other circumstance or someplace else. And never compare your lot with another's. Never allow yourself to wish this or that had been otherwise. And lastly, she wrote in her journal, and never dwell on tomorrow. Remember that tomorrow is God's and not ours. Contentment is a holy habit, and this woman had discovered how to live it out because she had an eternal perspective. Her last statement in her journal about not dwelling on tomorrow showed that all her tomorrows were God's and that she was putting into action the very words of Jesus who said, Take no thought of tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought of its own. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Contentment is an uncomplaining acceptance of one's life, situation, or circumstances. Contentment is an inside job. It is not determined by our outward circumstances, situations, bank balance, beauty, or accolades of men. Contentment happens within. I love Shakespeare's King Henry the Sixth, and there is a scene where a king is wandering in the country and he meets two gamekeepers. He informs them that he is a king, and one of them asks, But if thou be king, where is thy crown? And he replies, My crown is in my heart, not on my head. Not decked with diamonds and Indian stones, nor to be seen. My crown is called content, a crown it is that seldom kings enjoy. Beloved child of God, are you a contented Christian? The word of God teaches and admonishes us to be content. I want to share four areas that is in opposition to our contentment. First, it is anxiety. The scripture tells us that we are not to be anxious even about the necessities of life. Jesus said, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. 
Is not life more than meat and the body than clothing? You know, I really appreciate Matthew Henry's comments on this scripture. He says that there is scarcely any one sin against which God, which Lord Jesus more largely and earnestly warns his disciples than the sin of disquieting, distracting, distrustful cares about the things of this life. In other words, he's saying about those things that Jesus has promised that he would take care of for us. Being anxious is just another word for worry. Jesus tells us here, take no thought. In other words, do not be, don't be careful of tomorrow and what it might bring. If the enemy can keep us in a state of anxiety, worry, and fear, then we become, as Matthew Henry stated, disquieted, distracted, and distrustful. Disquieting thoughts of tomorrow robs us of our joy in Christ Jesus. In fact, if our minds are disquieted and weighed down by anxious care, our sleep can even be disturbed, making us less appreciative and joyful in ourselves, with our family and our friends. And it can cause us to focus on what we don't have rather than what we do have. God has promised to care for all the little necessities of life, such as food and clothing, when you put your trust in him and stop being anxious and worried. Contentment begins with knowing God will provide in the things most necessary to life. I can remember as a single mom years ago raising three sons that I learned very early in my walk of faith in reading in the Old Testament that there is corn in Egypt and God is just waiting to bring you a wagon loaded with provisions. Egypt represents the world and God knows how to take care of his own in his world. So, beloved child of God, the first thought in living the contented life is to stop being anxious about tomorrow. The CEO of this world, God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the precious Holy Spirit know how to get the resources to you. Be anxious for nothing, beloved. But in all things, it says, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Know, beloved child of God, that if you truly belong to Him, He knows all about you, and you can rest quiet and content in Him, because He is the one that is in control of your life. In 1 Timothy 6.15, the Phillips translation puts it so beautifully. God is the blessed controller of all things, the king over all kings, and the master of all masters. Theologian J.I. Packer says, Contentment is essentially a matter of accepting from God's hand what he sends because we know that he is good and therefore it is good. This, beloved, is faith to live by. You've been listening to Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. If you would like to write with your comments or to request a copy of this program for an $8 donation, write Sue Taylor, 10827 Highway 86 East, Neosho, Missouri, 64850. Sue Taylor is a member of the KNEO team and a keynote speaker at several church and women's events throughout the four-state area. To book Sue for your next event, Contact Sky High Radio at 417-451-5636. The world is in chaos. You're here for a purpose. What does the Bible have to say about it all? I'm Mark Taylor, host of Crosspoint podcast and radio show. And I'd like to invite you to join me each week as I navigate the complexities of faith, culture, and personal growth. Each week, I interview a different guest who is making an impact on the culture for God's kingdom. Whether you're seeking spiritual guidance, true information, or a fresh perspective, this podcast equips you to discern truth in today's chaotic world. When Christianity intersects with everyday life, that's where you'll find Crosspoint, sometimes discussing the issues that some churches don't want to talk about. Look up Crosspoint with Mark Taylor 
wherever you get your podcast produced by KNO Radio and the Sky High Podcast Network.